Well, continuing with exposing the false gospel of Rich Pankowski taught in Mormonism in the Mormon text, because the false gospel of Mormonism is no different than that of Pankowski's. You know, I've shown that it's Catholic in nature, then video showing it's Mormon in nature, and this will be a further addition to the list of videos proving that Pankowski is just teaching Mormonism, as well as teaching Catholicism with his false gospel. In this case, the idea of salvation by holiness, other, you know, properly called salvation by self-righteousness, is a Mormon doctrine. Okay, and I'll show that, but here's a few clips from Pankowski uh, pushing this heresy. This is the first clip where he says that salvation is by continual faith and obedience. Okay, check this out. So the seal was conditioned on continued faith and obedience. You know, those two pesky things uh, that, that the American Christians, uh, they hate. They hate continuing faith and they hate continual obedience. They hate that. They hate it. They want to believe that they're sealed and nothing they can do. No matter how evil they live their lives, these people believe that they can go out and molest 50 children and they will go straight to heaven when they die. That's what they honestly believe. All right, this next clip is Minkowski denying that future sins are forgiven at salvation, that the blood of Christ cleanses all sin. You're going to see that in Mormonism as well. Okay, check this out. If your sins are forgiven by the blood of Christ, he will go to he you will go to heaven. If your sins are forgiven, that is correct. Um, but again, your sins aren't forgiven before you commit them. You know, God didn't forgive your sins before you commit them. You, when you commit sin, you need to repent of that. You need to confess and repent. Now, in this clip, Rich Pankowski is attacking imputed righteousness. He says that imputed righteousness is only given by obedience. See, again, it's all about you. It's all about you staying saved by your righteousness. Okay, check this out. If you believe that you can sin, 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 and that God is not going to see your sin, that is going to see Christ, not you, then you are deluded. Okay? It's not going to happen. Scripture doesn't say that. Scripture doesn't say that anywhere. Just because the Bible talks about imputed righteousness, it doesn't say anything about the imputed righteousness of Christ. Just because it's Christ, righteousness is credited, you know, to Abraham and things. It doesn't say anything about it being Christ's righteousness that was given to him, but it was the righteousness that credited him because of his belief and his obedience. Now, in this final clip, Rich Minkowski is again pushing this idea of salvation being by continual obedience, not by not a one-time process, but, you know, not it, it basically doesn't happen at the moment you believe, but instead it's actually this continual process of obedience, repentance, and faith, and you lose your salvation, you get it back, you lose it, you get it back. It's complete heresy. It's Mormonism, but check this out. I mean, let, let's just call a spade a spade. You're a liar. Nobody preaches a works-based salvation. Unless you tell me that obedience to Christ is not necessary for salvation. Or is obedience to Christ works-based? Is repentance works-based? Is belief works-based? Because it's something you have to do. You can't be saved if you don't believe. You can't be saved if you don't repent. And you can't be saved if you don't obey. Is that works-based salvation too? Now, what you're going to see from these Mormon texts and Mormon writings I'm about to read, they're preaching the exact same heresies as Minkowski, making salvation all about you staying saved and, you know, the blood of Christ doesn't wash away all sins. You're going to see that from the Mormon texts. I'm going to show you that right now, as I've shown in other videos. So this is from the uh, Miracles of Forgiveness by this uh, Mormon, it was, a, it was a prominent Mormon official. It was in page 206. It says, one of the most fallacious doctrines originated by Satan and propounded by, uh, propounded by man is that man is saved alone by the grace of God, that belief in Jesus Christ alone is all that is needed for salvation. Is that not what you hear from uh, Pinkowski? That is, this is a Mormon, uh, Mormon writing saying this. Okay? And by the way, too, when it comes to belief alone, okay, easy believism is heresy as well. See, repentance, you, know, you have godly sorrow about your sins. You, know, you come to God in repentance, faith toward, you know, repentance towards God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do sin, there will be chastening and chastisement. Absolutely. It's not like this easy believism, you know, antinomianism heresy. See, that's wicked as well. It's a, it's a false dichotomy. You have the hyper work salvationist, and then you have the antinomian easy believers who think you can live in sin and there's no, there's no uh, punishment, there's no chasing of God. Both sides are false. Both sides have zero understanding of the new birth. Plain and simple. But, yeah. Here's this other uh, Mormon writing. This is from the Book of Mormon. Uh, Alma 1137 
It says, And I say unto you again, that he cannot save them in their sins, for I cannot deny his word. For he hath said that no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, how can ye be saved except ye inherit the kingdom of heaven? Therefore, ye cannot be saved in your sins. Now, Jesus Christ came to save his people from their sins, absolutely. But you see, what these guys are saying, and that's in Matthew chapter 1, I believe it's verse 21, if I'm not mistaken. But what these guys, when they say you cannot be saved in your sins, what they're saying is, is not Jesus Christ washing away my sins. It's actually you are stopping your sin to be saved. You're living holy to be saved. That's what they're preaching there. Because you see, of course, Jesus Christ came to save his people from their sins. Absolutely. But it's Jesus Christ doing it. You're not saving yourself by living sinlessly perfect. See, that, that's the big difference there. But you see this exact same heresy taught by Pinkowski. This is from the Journal of Discourses, Volume 3, uh, page 100, or two, sorry, 247. Look, check this out. It says, Jesus' sacrifice was not able to cleanse us from all our sins. Murder and repeated adultery are exceptions. Is that not what we hear from Pekoski? Oh, it's such a lie to say that, you know, the blood of Jesus Christ washes away all sins. This is Mormon heresy. Like, what you're he hearing from these writings are no different than what you'd hear from Pekoski. The only difference is Pekoski will rebuke a lot of the idolatry of Mormonism, and rightfully so, but his false gospel is perfectly in line with the false gospel of Mormonism and of Roman Catholicism. This is in the Articles of Faith, uh, page 78 and 79. The first effect of the atonement is to secure to all mankind alike exemption from the penalty of the fall, thus providing the plan of, of general salvation. The second effect is to open the way for the individual salvation, whereby mankind may secure remission of personal sins. See, you're securing your own salvation. See, it's you keeping yourself saved. You know, you're having to stop your sin to be saved. It's not the G not Jesus Christ washing away my sins. It's not the Holy Ghost chastising me, the Holy Ghost cleaning my life up, regenerating me. You know, no, it's you you staying saved by what you do. It totally undermines the cross of Jesus Christ. And same thing with the antinomian easy believist who think you can just live however you want and there's no chastisement from God, there's no chastening, you know, whatever else. That's that's wicked and heresy as well. But again, it's a whole false dichotomy. This is in the Articles of Faith, page 79. As these sins are the result of individual acts, it is just it, sorry, it is just that the forgiveness of them should be conditioned on individual compliance with the prescribed requirements, obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. Ooh, there, look at that. Obedience to be saved. Pinkowski is teaching Mormonism. And that's a Mormon writing that was saying that. See, salvation, see, whether Pinkowski likes to admit it or not, his salvation is not finished at the cross. His salvation is continual upon staying saved by what you do. It's no different than the false gospel of Roman Catholicism and the false gospel of Mormonism. It undermines the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It undermines, the, you know, it basically puts sin above the, the blood of Jesus Christ, as in sin can now override the, you know, cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's no different. It's no different than what's Roman, taught in Roman Catholicism that, you know, you're, you basically your salvation is, you know, re-sacrificed at the Mass each week. You are, you know, perpetually having to live holy to stay saved. And even after you die, you have to go to purgatory. All of it undermines the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's what work salvation does. It's no different than the atheist mentality I used to have when I was a lost atheist. That, you see, I'm a good person. And my, you know, if there is a God, then my good works will just, you know, my goodness will outweigh all the bad stuff I did. It's no different. Plain and simple. Pinkowski's preaching Mormonism out on the streets as well as Roman Catholicism, taking souls to hell with them. And he has zero understanding of the new birth. Why? Because he's still a lost hellbound sinner himself. Same thing with the antinomian easy believers like Jack Smack 7 7, or as I call him, Jack Smack 666. They don't understand the new birth. Why? Because they've never experienced it. They're still lost hellbound sinners, just like the Sodomites they like to rebuke. So, wanted to show you guys that. Don't be deceived by Pinkowski. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.